Hey there berries, welcome to my Renata support guide. If you don't know who I am, my name is Bizzleberry. I am a master support on EU West and I do a lot of guide covering for a lot of the supports, uh, most of them, at least the relevant ones, at least anyway, on both Mobify and on YouTube. Recently this year, we have recovered uh, a lot of the enchanters because that's the meta at the moment. So like Nama, Nama? <laughs> mummy. Uh, no mummy? And we've done um, Soraka and Janna, and, and obviously today we're doing Renata. Now I know this is early days yet, if you're watching this as this video comes out, we are still on PBE, so I've only played her on the PBE, but I'm fairly confident that everything that I have here information-wise uh, is correct and relevant and will be happening when she goes live. If there's anything dramatic changing, then this video will not exist anymore and, uh, you know, it won't be relevant. So if you're watching this video, all the information, or at least 99.9% .9 of it, should be all good. Uh, if anything changes, I will make a second updated uh, version of this guide. If anything minor does change, like maybe an item, you know, might be more meta that might get discovered, I'll put it down on the pinned comments down below. So just double check that at the end of the video, just to make sure on that. Now, let's get into the uh, the actual guide itself. If you're new to the guides here, um, well, firstly, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get Renata gameplay and stuff and any other uh, supports that come out or that you're interested in, I will be making guides for them for this year. But if you're new here, uh, my guide process is runes, and then we go into a practice tool. We talk about the the abilities, the skill order, uh, how to use those abilities, and like little tips and tricks that you can use that you might have not been aware of. And then we talk about the the items, and then I say bye bye. All right, all good. All right. We'll start with the runes, as you can already see on screen. This is pretty much what you'll be taking for the majority of your games. So it is an Arcane Comet build. If you really do wish, you can opt into an Airy as well, but Arcane Comet, in my opinion, is the best. Uh, Renata has several abilities that do crowd control, so landing the Arcane Comet honestly shouldn't be a problem at all. Manifo uh, Band is the only way that you're going to be getting extra mana uh, regeneration here, and it's very much needed in this build that I'll be doing, as the items that we'll be picking up don't really contain any magic regeneration, mana regeneration. So mana flow band helps cover that at least for the mid to, to the late game overall. Transcendence is basically needed on Renata. Her cooldowns are absolutely massive across the board. Um, so you're going to need ability haste. There's, there's no way around it. So transcendence will help you on that. And because she needs to win the laning phase, um, ideally, at least anyway, uh, more so than most of the other champions, then Scorch helps provide that little boost for the first, you know, 10-ish minutes of the game. Um, otherwise, going something like uh, Gathering Storm, um, you know, would be later better, lit past like 10 minutes. But the problem is, is that Renata doesn't really actually need a whole lot of ability power in her kit. A lot of it will be just her ultimate, which we'll talk about later, which doesn't have any ability scaling whatsoever. Then we've gone into the inspiration tree. Um, you can fiddle around with this slightly still. If you have mana issues, you can drop the perfect timing for the biscuit delivery. But with the build that I will be showing you, we will be running into a Zonia's Hourglass. Uh, getting the stopwatch for the laning phase is super awesome. And also having stopwatch reduces the cost of purchasing the, the Zonia's by 250 gold. So you're saving a decent chunk of change there as well. Approach Velocity with the Inspiration is mandatory uh, because you will be using one of your abilities to slow and you'll be chasing up on them to then root them. So the, the the slow and then getting movement speed going towards that target to help you land the extra skill shot is, is going to be pretty vital to this. So Approach Velocity is mandatory. If you end up wanting to do something more kind of enchanter based with Renata, which overall I would not necessarily recommend, you can do a kind of like revitalize because she has a lot of shields um, with like a bone pacing if you're particularly worried about a hard engage or even something like a font of life if you want to apply some of the uh, the healing effects of like ardent sensor onto your team. But I don't really want to cover it that much because I don't think that's going to be what's going to be happening with her. 
So back with the, the stopwatch and the approach velocity. In terms of the stat runes, we will be going into the ability haste at the very beginning once again because she has very extremely long cooldowns and she, her ability uh, the ability power scaling really doesn't matter uh, once she starts having access to her ultimate. Uh, but we will still be picking up the adaptive force to help us in the laning phase. And the armor is uh, is situational. 99% of the time you're going to be wanting to take the armor. But if you do know you're up against like double magic damage bot lane, say if you're up against like a Ziggs and you know pretty much any other support, then magic resist will be better for you, particularly because it gives more points. So it plus eight magic resistance as well. So that is the rune coverage. This is what you should be running every single game. And we're going to be moving into the uh, the practice tool. Um, in terms of summoners, you're going to want to do a ignite flash. Um, you could maybe do exhaust flash, but you're going to have less power there in lane. But ignite flash will help you land and get those kills that you need early in the lane. It doesn't necessarily mean you specifically need to get the killing blow on on the on the enemy champions. It's just making sure that you are ahead and you can snowball uh, your victory against the, your bot lane so you can over overwhelm them essentially. So we lock in Renata here and when we get into practice tool um, we'll be loading in a few target dummies and showing off some of her abilities and her passive. I will say overall Renata is one of the harder champions to play uh, in the support role in League. She's definitely on par with something like a, a Bard or a Senna. So not necessarily for the faint hearted. Alright, let's let me get some levels in here. And let's get some refreshing and we will get some target dummies in here. We like some target dummies, don't we? And we don't want minions to spawn. Okay, beautiful. Thank you for your patience. Okay. So there's a lot going on here with the abilities. I'll try and be as clear as possible. Um, but there's a lot going on. I'll do my best. So Renata's passive is very similar to Imperial Mandate. It's uh, Imperial Mandate, if you're familiar with that, whenever you do a damaging ability or attack onto an enemy champion, it puts a debuff on them, and then that, that instance does extra damage as well. And then if your allied champion hits that target as well, it detonates the mark. And it works. This works pretty much the same way, except you don't get the bonus movement speed. Also, there's no cooldown. So, for example, um, the initial hit on a target, they'll be marked by this little kind of vapor. It lasts around about six to eight seconds. So a relatively long time. So when you do that initial hit, you're going to be doing bonus damage yourself. At the start, it's around about 3% of the enemy's maximum health damage. Now, if my target dummy could attack this target, it would detonate that mark, and then you could just keep reapplying the mark over and over and over again. In this instance here, this target dummy already has the debuff, so we can then hit the other target dummy and apply that, that debuff onto that one, and then you can see the original mark on the first target is now gone. So you can only have this debuff on one target at a time. But if you're on like a 1v2 situation and you want to get the maximum amount of damage done as possible, you can easily just attack, keep attacking the different targets. If you're familiar with like Misfortune's Love Tap, it's very, very similar to that. You won't be able to detonate your own mark. You absolutely need an, an attack or an ability from an allied champion. So in the team fight, you're kind of encouraged to be quite up near the front. Her auto attack range isn't the uh, the longest in the game for sure. Um, just enough for you to get in and do a couple of auto attacks. Because there's max health damage, um, Ideally, if there is a tank at the front line, that is probably the best person to mark because it will give you the the highest effective health damage overall in, in a game. But you're just going to want to whack those down as much as possible, essentially. Uh, so her Q 
is called Handshake. Now this is very similar to a Blitzcrank hook, but super short range. <laughs> the range on this is actually pretty short and there's two components to it. So Renata fires out a hook from her and it goes in a straight line and it can be blocked by minions. But if it does reach a target, so in this case, we'll be pretend the target dummy is an enemy champion. You grab them, it does damage and it roots them. Now you'll need to very quickly press your Q button again in a direction in order to displace them. Now this, the displacement circle isn't too big around the target, it's actually relatively small. So you can nudge them in any direction you want. You can go left, right, up, down, or just keep them in place if you really want to. So that's kind of cool, for example, if you need to, to move them into, for example, like a Caitlyn trap. Say Caitlyn's put down a trap and it's kind of just missed, you can easily then like, just like displace them into it. So that would be a pretty nice combination, for example. Now Renata's Q, the second part of the, of the ability is a recast. And this will do damage if you hit another target with the target that you're pushing. So, if, for example, if we hit this target dummy and we, we crash it in to the other target dummy, the second unit will take uh, the damage that the, what would happen from the first part of the ability. So they're not missing out. So, for example, if this grab does 170 damage and we push it into this other target, it will mean that the secondary target will take 170 damage, but the first target doesn't take like double instances of damage. So the person getting pushed doesn't take like a second instance of damage essentially. If the unit that you're grabbing here is a champion, it will only, it will do damage, but it will also stun as well. So you can see very briefly there that a target is getting stunned if they are moved over. You can obviously affect multiple champions with this, so this is like a small little AoE. So if a lot of people are comped up, you can just push slide the uh, the original target that you have into multiple enemies, and then they will take damage, and then they also will be micro-stunned. It's about a 0.5 second stun. It's nothing too crazy, but it could in interrupt a couple of channels and, and things like that. So the second ability is her bailout. Now, this is where things get a little crazy, okay, and it's going to be hard to particularly show this in the practice tool, but we'll do our best. So, Renata's W is called Bailout. If you're familiar with Lulu, it's, we've kind of got <laughs> sort of the same ability here, maybe. Um, so, you W an, a, a, an ally target, an ally champion. You can also do this on yourself, by the way. And you can tell they've got the buff by this kind of like purple extra thing next to them. Now when they are moving towards an enemy champion, if they can see them, they get increased movement speed and they get increased attack speed. And that gets stronger and stronger and stronger as the duration goes on. If your ally gets a takedown, which is a kill or an assist on the target, the duration is refreshed and it will keep refreshing until it finally falls off and there's no one else to kill. Now here's the bit where it's going to be kind of crazy. So if your ally or yourself were to die, I can actually show this actually. So if we were to die with this buff, We basically turn into like a zombie state. So at this point, my health goes to full. So I get 100% of my health back. And I've got essentially about three seconds to kill a target. Or we get a takedown on the target to not actually die. So if I do manage to do that, so in this instance here, if I... You know, get put down to zero HP, the buff keeps me alive for a little bit longer, but my health deteriorates very, very quickly. If I manage to get a takedown, my health will then be put at 35%. Now, you can only have this effect happen once per spell cast, but, you know, 
if the fight is lasting that long and you have low enough cooldown reduction, you can then reapply Bailout onto that target. Then if they fall below zero again, the same instance will happen where they go from 100% to zero, and then if they can score a takedown, then they survive. That's how the ability works. So in fights, essentially, you're going to be judging whether or not to treat it like a zillion ult, if you're familiar with that. So in some cases, you might just be using it on someone just before they go down, and then they can like respawn and try and retaliate and get maybe a lucky takedown. Or you'll be giving this what, something to like a, a Master Yi about to go in, charging him with his ulti. You give him the buff, increases his attack speed and movement speed, and he just tries and keeps getting takedowns to make sure the buff lasts longer. Uh, but if he were to fall down, you know, he would still have a second chance to briefly try and kill somebody during that. Now, interestingly, um, on this effect, if we had, like, a uh, an ult that could survive, keep me alive for longer. So as long as I have, for example, like a kindred ult. So you can't technically die while standing in a kindred ult, enemy or ally, until, like, the duration ends. So you can extend the uh, the effective dura duration of your like zombie form for a little bit longer with things like that and, and Zonya's works as well to to try and you know hope that someone gets it uh, allows you to get an assist from a champion kill during that time um, and trying to think and you can be healed a little bit through it but the burn damage is so strong that actually being healed for it for any meaningful amount of time is basically you know irrelevant now her e called loyalty program is what you're going to be using for the majority of the uh, of the laning phase at least anyway so as you can see here we've got two circles so when if i was to press the e button here uh, it would just designate you know rockets above myself uh, any allied champions that are nearby in this circle or either circle, I should add, to, to stop confusion, or in the line in between the circles, will be shielded. Any enemies will be damaged and slowed. So let me just showcase this. So, so even if they're in the line there, this ally still gets shielded. If there were an enemy there, they would still get damaged. So we can showcase that on these dummies here. And these targets are also slowed. Now, in a mixture fight, so say if there's, you know, both enemies and allies in the same area, it will do that, you know, everything all in one go. So, as you can see here, there's an ally dummy in the middle. We're shielding this ally, and we're damaging and slowing the enemies around them. And this is essentially what you're going to be using in lane the most. Um, you can get the cooldown relatively low-ish once we pick up some more items, and it's the ability that we're going to be maxing first. So you'll obviously be taking your ultimate whenever you can, and then it'll be E, W, and then Q. That's the ability skill order prioritization. So it's pretty pretty bread and butter, butter. What you're going to be doing is because this ability slows, you're going to be firing your rockets out at the enemy. And then with your approach velocity, you're going to be walking towards them and then trying to get yourself into a decent Q range in order to root the target and then do your magic on them. So normal scenario would be E rockets, getting into position, grab, chuck into another enemy champion ideally. So in the middle of, of a team fight in the mid and late game, you're gonna be wanting to stand around, you know, ideally next to a couple of people so they get the, uh, the shield from you. And hopefully you're hitting some targets there at the end. The good thing about this as well is that if there is an assassin on top of you, you can just fire your rockets out straight away like that. Maybe you clip something at the end here with uh, on an ally or an enemy. And because this circle is semi-generous, you'll be damaging and slowing any enemies near you as well. Now, finally, we have um, Renetta's ultimate. And that's going to be even harder to show on the practice tool. So... We've got the same kind of length as like a Nami wave. The width is about the same, but I will say the ultimate's slightly slower. You There's quite a wind up to this ability as well. It's slow moving. 
So what this does is if you hit any enemies, so this includes minions and enemy champions, they're going to be turned into a berserk state. Now berserk state uh, will give them 100% attack speed for the full duration while they're berserking, but they are forced, they can't control their, their champions, they are forced to attack nearby allies and they will prioritize their own champion teammates. This is cleansable and uh, quicksilver sashable, just so that you're completely aware of that. Also, the duration on this is extremely low early on, but if you manage to get three points in this, uh, it's quite long at 2.25. It doesn't sound long, but because you're increasing their attack speed by 100%, just imagine like a full item like Master Yi or Jinx, and you're hitting like three or four enemy champions with this, they will slaughter their own team. Trust me. <laughs> I've got a couple of videos of Renata on and there are some e amazing examples of AD carries just nuking their own squishy enchanter support with this. So although there is no direct like AP ratio to this, it is also counted as a crowd control effect. So if you do end up using Glacial Augment, for example, it will proc that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is cleansable and quick, quick silver sashable. Also, things like Brom Wall, Yasuo Wall, um, we've got what's the spinny lady called? Samira and Herwin Wall will also uh, make it so that this doesn't work. So be careful. And because this is all based on auto attacks, so they won't be casting abilities at each other, it's all auto attacks. If you're up against an extremely heavy ability power focused team and not much auto attacking, this ult won't really give you any value whatsoever. So do take that into consideration when picking Renata, rather than just blind picking her every game. But if you see like a lot of auto attackers, like a Jinx, as I mentioned, like a Jinx and a Master E on the enemy team, this would be pretty good. Um, it does make the units also larger as well, so you can kind of see them like in that berserk state. And as you can see there, it doesn't look like it lasts very long, and it's only one point, so it doesn't. But if we go up a few levels, so this is the duration with two points. You can see that's much more noticeable. That's only another 0 0.5 seconds, but that is that looked like quite a long time. And if we do three points in... Oh, that is, that's a really, really long time. Um, I, I promise, if it doesn't seem long to you, then I promise you, once you get to experience this in a late game team fight where people have five, six items, um, yeah, it's going to do a lot of damage. So that is the whole gist of, of Renata's kit. And we've already kind of covered some of the, the tips and things that you can do during the laning phase. So that, as I mentioned before, the main bread and butter is, you know, Eing, getting into range, queuing, and then pushing them into another champion to get that stun off as well, and also damage the other target. Uh, if you're getting engaged on in lane, you can cast, you can kind of recast the second part of the queue. So say for example, target dummy at the front here was after me. I could turn around here, and then as I'm walking away, I can just push it back out. Do note that you do have your movement speed reduced while doing this, so you want to like let them go as quickly as possible. Another Q tip here as well is, so you can see here we're on the max range of the Q. So if I grab this target here, we're at the cusp of the range, but you can actually push it further out of the range. And as you can see, like I can't like grab again from that range. So you can push them out completely of your, your Q range if you need to, to get the maximum disengage off as possible. Just to kind of like show like the disengage, it's like you can then run away and then recast as you're like walking backwards while they're rooted. But generally, it's better to just um, come here. <laughs> generally, it's better to just release it as quickly as possible when you're getting ganked. So be like quick root, quick dodge away, and then run away because they'll still be rooted briefly when they are um, if they're pushed quickly enough anyway. So, yeah, as I mentioned with the W in team fights as well, you're going to be making that decision whether you want to buff your AD carry earlier rather than later. 
it's up to you if you want to treat it like a zillion alt. If you're having a problem with your AD carry getting wrecked by assassins, it generally be better to just wait until those assassins pop up, quickly get the W on, and then your AD carry can still do something for a few seconds. And who knows, they might actually be able to retaliate and kill the assassin before they can get away again. So it's quite a powerful spell in that regard. And the scanning on this is actually not actually too bad. So the base amount uh, at max points, at least at the moment, is 30% on the attack speed. The AP scaling on Renata is really not that great. Um, her Q has okay AP scaling and her E isn't terrible, but the main focus of this is, isn't is ability power, it's just ability haste. Because her abilities are overall quite nice, but uh, in terms of actual damage and the, the numbers themselves, it's not really something that you're not looking... You're not like the equivalent of of like a Brand or a Zyra in, in lane or even necessarily a Lux. Because those champions still do damage, a decent chunk of damage later on, you're much more like utility based, kind of more like a Karma in the sense that she does decent amount of damage in lane, but the damage falls off a lot as the game goes on, but she still has that utility for her team with the shields and the peeling and the roots and things like that. So it's on the same kind of wavelength as, as like a Karma. As you might have been able to tell, she's got no dashes, and overall her movement speed is, uh, isn't is super amazing. So she is extremely vulnerable to ganks, and that's why she's one of the harder support champions to play. Um, if you do get a focus down, it's going to be very difficult to get away. So um, we will be taking some defensive measures in order for you to do things in teamfights with the items. But bear in mind, overall, because of how upfront she really kind of needs to be to get her kit off, um, you know, you, you can't just go fall into like, you know, AP because there's no point in doing that with the ratios. You're mainly going to be taking that cooldown reduction kind of stance. So items. Finally got to the item section. Of course, you'll be starting with the spell Thief's Edge. Please. Why can't I buy my spell Thief's? There we go. So you'll be having the spell Thief's Edge and, you know, that'd be converted as you do damage in the lane. The support item to go for, I think, uh, I personally think, will be the Imperial Mandate. Uh, doesn't cost too much. The only downside of this ability, of this item, sorry, is the Mythic passive isn't great because you don't really care about the AP too much. But overall, just because of, like, Imperial Mandate and then your kit anyway... Relatively easy to proc off with your E, your Q, and your ultimate. Your ultimate also does apply an Imperial Mandate, which I can show here, which is that, that mark above their head there. So all of that applies the Imperial Mandate. So you have three abilities that can help apply that, and you know that would also then work with your auto attacks as well, and there'd be a lot of like detonation damage per target, essentially, there. Next, we're going to want... A, more money so we can buy items, but B, Boots of Lucidity. Lucidity. Uh, two reasons for this. Um, haste and also pretty cheap. So the Ability Haste is what we need. And with these two items combined, we are sitting around about 37% uh, cooldown reduction already. Awesome. Now, as mentioned earlier, we've got the Stopwatch and the Runes, and then we're going to want to convert that into Zonyas. Because we're going to be in the front line a lot. We're going to be in, in, in trouble in a lot of situations. You're going to find yourself in the middle of a fight, trying to do your combo, catching one target off, doing your auto attacks, and eventually at some point here, because you're quite far, far up, you will have the Zonyas. The other plus side of this as well is if you find yourself crowded around with a few champions in your Zonya, you can then like Zonyas and then get ready to ult and then flash away. To try and get away. Also, in regarding to flash and your ultimate, by the way, if you do the wind up cast on your ultimate and then flash in the direction you want to go, it makes your ult essentially go forward a little bit quicker as well. So, let me just show that again. So, ulti, you can then flash forward at the start of that animation to nudge it potentially in a, in a different direction as well. You could cast it forward here and then change the direction. That is totally possible doing that. That's pretty cool. 
So this is going to be your core build for the majority of the game. Two item support is pretty normal. You have a few other options now at this point. Um, Cosmic Drive is quite an interesting choice. You do get a lot of haste and you do get some movement speed on this. Uh, you won't necessarily be getting spell dance off too often, but you are encouraged to auto attack anyway because of your passive. So, and you can proc spell dance from doing those auto attacks. So it could be uh, beneficial doing. Uh, if you're not a fan of cosmic drive, you can always just run straight into the wardstone. Now, the reason behind that is because once you hit level 13, and have your support item complete, it will then convert automatically into a Vision Wardstone, which also counts as a legendary item, so that increases your mythic bonus if you were unaware. It allows you to have one extra control ward and one extra stealth ward on the map at all times, so that means you can have four stealth wards and two control wards on the map. But the thing also we're looking for here is that ability haste that we were talking about. So it gives 15 on base ability haste, but then it also gives you an additional 12% increase of your ability uh, haste as well, on top of what you have already. So you can enter into some quite nice numbers. It's not too uncommon to be entering close to around about that, close to the 50% cooldown reduction mark with Renata with this build, which helps massively because once we start entering into the later stages of mid game, Unfortunately, we don't have the extra uh, haste, so let me just cheat a little bit and buy a Kindle Gem to kind of replicate the, the Wardstone better here. So we're on about 47% haste here. Her, um, her Q is 8 seconds. And her E is 5.3 seconds. So you can spam this, you know, relatively often into a team fight. And her W is also reduced even further to once you get this max 10.6 seconds. So this is already dramatically reduced from without these items. We can have another quick look and kind of compare that. So without the cooldown that we just picked up, you know, the E would be on like an eight second cooldown. The W would be, so yeah, an eight sec, 8.5 second cooldown on the E, an 18 second cooldown on the W. 13 second cooldown on the Q, so that just kind of shows like if this was a mid game team fight where you really need to get your crowd control off much more often, you're just not going to be able to do more than one rotation. You're going to be um, essentially just doing your, your combo and your abilities on people. And then the rest of the time, you'd just be kind of stuck doing auto attacks, while, which is okay since her auto attacks aren't that bad, but you know. Ideally, you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're stuck at waiting for your cooldowns to be up for such a long time and you're just kind of hanging around doing auto attacks. You want to be a little bit more useful than that. So cooldown reduction ability haste is absolutely the way to go with her. The, the shielding scaling, if you're wondering, isn't super amazing on Renata. And because we won't be taking too much um, ability power, uh, the shielding isn't going to be like, super, super duper amazing. I can. Just, I know some people might be tempted to go into like the Moonstone Renewer build, but I would urge you to try this kind of AP uh, cooldown reduction build first. Get a feel of that, and if you do really want to do an enchanted build, then I would recommend something along the lines of a either a Shredias or a Moonstone. The uh, the the Shredias would probably be overall the the best option, primarily because of the the mythic bonus would give you extra ability haste. So it would be looking like a Shredias. You still would be taking the, boot, the cooldown reduction boots. You absolutely would want those. And then it kind of comes down to, you know, how much benefit you would get if you had a lot of auto attackers on your team because you could, in effect, shield a lot of people with like an Arden Senza. Redemption's pretty staple as well and pretty nice. But you probably would then ending up into a... Um, a wardstone build anyway just to make sure that you're keeping up with the haste and just because it's a really nice utility item anyway and you know if you are up against um a lot of assassins you probably would want to lean towards the zonyas anyway so um generally the builds are looking relatively the same at the very least anyway even if you are opting into that slightly more enchanter kind of side of things which at the moment i don't really necessarily recommend or see a point at the moment to do that.
But hopefully this gets you ready for Renata when she gets released on the next patch next week. If she isn't released for you already, if you're watching this week video when she's already out. Um, as I mentioned, this guide will be staying on the YouTube channel for as long as I feel like this is the correct information. So everything in this video is good for now um, and you can trust it. And I wish you all the best playing Renata, but do give her a couple of games and normals before you try her, her and ranked at the very least because she is a very difficult champion to play. Um, and uh, you got a lot of the stress elements of lots of different champions on this one. So good luck. <laughs> all the best. Make sure you subscribe for more support content and um, see you soon for another video.